So why do I use the kangaroo? The simple reason, the patient. The other options for a pouch are limited in that the only noteworthy claim is reduced risk of infection. But that's only one aspect of patient care. There's a gamut of different uh, issues that are involved with implantation of devices in patients. And infection or risk of infection is just one of those uh, issues that we worry about as physicians. So infection risk is there from scarring, from calcification, those individuals have a prior history. But also, as we talked about, the thin patients, low BMI patients, geriatric patients. As you often are seeing now in your practice, and I'm seeing in my practice, I'm operating on a subset of patients which are older and older. Older patients have higher risks for multitude of different reasons as well as comorbidities, but also dealing with patients who are smaller frame, low BMI, and implanting defibrillators and high energy devices. The concerns are of migration, of erosion. There's also the concept of Twiddler syndrome. While in fellowship, uh, the Twiddler syndrome was introduced, essentially the patient externally manipulating their device which leads to lead dislodgement and having to revise the entire system. I was told in training that this is a minority, one to 2%, but in clinical practice, it's surprising, and that could be also geographically related, how high of an incidence, up to 15% of patients I'm seeing, uh, manipulating their devices, uh, not necessarily intentionally, but with the endpoint of dislodgement and having to go back for lead revisions. So migration is an issue. These also patients with twiddlers also sometimes have a history of noncompliance and increased risk of lead dislodgement, again, leading to increased cases of revision. Now, the type of device is also important. Uh, with larger devices, and again, smaller, thinner patients, we have increased risk of erosion and migration. And then we have the uh, subset population of those individuals receiving SICDs, which is, especially in older and thinner population, poses its own set of problems. And another phenomena that I'm starting to see more in my practice, especially when implanting younger patients, is the concept of pocket pain. Pain at the pocket, pain around the device site. Seeing this more and more, as I said, with individuals uh, who are younger or who are prone to calcification and fibrosis or increased inflammation and having to deal with this subset of patients, which it's difficult to deal with them uh, from a non-invasive standpoint. So in life, we always want to make what we do more predictable and manageable, and that's the key with patients with devices. We're trying to make it more predictable. We don't want surprises, and we always want to make it more manageable to, to make it more important that the patient doesn't have long-term complications with whatever we're doing in the present. So again, what are some of the risks involved with the procedure and to the patient? Well, obviously, we always think of the high risk of infection, but there are other factors we need to a focus on as well. Erosion of the device, migration of the device, leading to possible revisions. You know, the types of device used have their own characteristics themselves, and again, pocket size pain. So we as physicians have traditionally been only concerned about infection, but again, for me, pocket health is so much more important based on my own uh, patient population. So the rationale for using ECM or why I use ECM Again, for too long, pocket health has gone by the wayside, meaning it's never been previously a concern in regards to the long-term well-being of the patient. The only thing we really have been focused on is the short-term issue of uh, pocket infections. We physicians have realized that not only are they increased risk of infection, especially with more high-risk population that we're dealing with, but also migration, pocket pain, erosion, and lead dislodgement. By preventing a chronic inflammatory or fibrotic response, and stimulating a regenerative and healing response. You're getting vascularization of the pocket, which supports long-term pocket health. By using extracellular matrix, you're promoting a vascular pocket that is free of scarring and calcification, and which can help with decreasing pocket pain in the short and long term, but also protect from longer-term issues such as infection. This is increasingly important as patients are living longer and going to have multiple devices implanted. So it's key to start with a healthy pocket from day one. And it's going to be important in long-term care and management of the patient with an implantable device. Nowadays, implanting a patient with a defibrillator at age 40 or 50, you know they're going to have multiple gender exchanges in their future. And for those 
out there who have been, you know, doing generic exchanges, you realize how much scar tissue that has to be broken down and carefully uh, removed to prevent any damage to the leaves themselves. But now imagine if from day one you started off with a healthy pocket and you did and you reduced all of this calcification and instead created a pocket which is essentially tissue which comes out in one whole uh, uh, amount versus having to chip away at calcification. That makes your job as a physician a lot easier and safer and more predictable.